As the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on mental health continues, psychologists are reporting a large increase in demand for treatment of depression and anxiety compared with last year. That's according to a recent report by the American Psychological Association. My next guest is Congressman Tony Cardenas, who represents the 29th District in the San Fernando Valley. He's been a champion for expanding mental health services, both locally and across the country. Here's our conversation. Congressman Tony Cardenas, it's good having you on In Focus SoCal again. Uh, great to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Tanya. So this summer, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline will transition to 988 with more services available for callers. And you recently introduced a bipartisan bill to provide support for states and counties in building local crisis response infrastructure ahead of the July launch. Break down this bill for us and how it's going to help this transition. Well, I'll start by saying 911 is familiar to everybody in this country, and it's wonderful that we have that. We have an infrastructure that if you need to call for a physical health issue or if somebody's in danger, you dial 911. Now, what Congress did in 2020 is we passed the authority to have 988 nationwide, and it's going to go live in the middle of July of this year. What that means is when you call 988, it's because somebody's having a mental health crisis moment. It might be an emergency situation. It might be somebody who's contemplating suicide. Right now, we have 800 numbers if somebody wants to call a suicide hotline. 988 is going to be that and much, much more. But it's going to be a network for around the country. And it's going to go live in the middle of this year. So we have a lot of work to do to make sure that those calls get handled in a way that someone is, will be able to answer, someone will be able to come, and then that person is going to be able, be able to get help. And you secured over $12 million in federal funds for various San Fernando Valley community organizations. Can you talk about some of those and the different initiatives, one being mental health? Yes. Uh, we have uh, organizations in our community very organic, and they're helping people with physical and mental health needs. And I was able to bring, in some cases, $400,000, up to a million dollars per organizations to help people with mental health and other issues. I'm very proud to say that this year we were able to get over $12.5 million to build more bridges and roads and green space and after-school programs and job training programs and much, much more. So it's really important that we understand that when – you elect people, that's the kind of thing that you want us to do. And I'm very proud to say that we were able to do it. I want to give a shout out to our brand new United States Senator, who's actually from the San Fernando Valley, from Pacoima, and that's Senator Alex Padilla. He was able to bring an additional 12 million or more to the San Fernando Valley in the budget that we just passed. So the San Fernando Valley is going to have a lot of good things happening because we were able to deliver. We have an organization that deals a lot with formerly incarcerated people who are struggling and getting back on their feet. And what they're going to be able to do is they're going to be able to hire a licensed clinical social worker to work with people that otherwise wouldn't be able to get that kind of help. So that's one of the projects I was able to help to fund. And then also in Silmar, we have a county facility that's going to now build out their mental health facility because we got them money so that they can actually do that. Congressman, you've led several bills to improve youth access to mental health resources. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an impact on our students and young adults. Can you talk us through some of these bills, including the Youth Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Act of 2021? Well, first of all, 988 is going to be for suicide prevention calls, and it's going to be for other mental health calls. But also, you've seen, I've seen, we all have heard that when it came to this pandemic, youth have been really affected badly when it comes to their condition and their mental health situation and suicides are now up dramatically so what we've been able to do is have bills that have actually helped to supplement local organizations to help more young people but also i have another bill that we're running right now to address specifically youth uh suicides and that's something that's going through the process as we speak hopefully we can get it out of the house of representatives this year and over to the senate so we can actually have additional resources and support for our youth. They really have been uh, decimated by this pandemic, not only physically, but mentally as well. And we need to be there to help them. You've also led efforts to improve resources for mental health professionals to respond to mental health emergencies instead of law enforcement. Los Angeles has a pilot program called the Crisis Incident Response Through Community-Led Engagement that does this. Why are actions like these critical? Well, 
Actions like these are very important. People don't realize it, but let me give you a, a statistic. We have about 9,500 police officers in LAPD to serve the 4 million people and businesses of the city of Los Angeles. But we only have a small, small handful of mental health professionals that are actually working on this pilot program. What I want to see happen, I want to see us in Los Angeles have 500, 1,000, 1,500 or more mental health professionals. And I would challenge anybody who wants to be the mayor of Los Angeles that if you do that, you are going to bring down crime. You're going to make our communities safer. We're going to bring down the homeless problem. It is going to be a paradigm shift for the life, not only of the people who are going to help, but for everybody involved in the community who wants to see everybody treated with dignity and respect and to get the help that they need. Congressman Cardenas, thank you for your time and for the work that you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate it, Tanya, and look forward to seeing you soon. That's it for this edition of In Focus SoCal. Tell us about what's going on in your community. Really, we want to know. You can email us at infocussocal at charter.com. And of course, you can also follow me or send me a message on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.